So it's my pleasure to welcome Pete and Terry from Useful Sensors. We're going to talk about running an LLM on a Raspberry Pi. Super exciting topic. Over to you guys, Pete and Terry. Awesome. Uh, thanks so much, Davis. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, today I'm going to be doing a show and tell, um, showing off some work that I've been doing and my team has actually been doing at Useful Sensors around getting LLMs running on pretty standard edge devices. So yeah, hi, I'm Pete Warden. Um, I'm a founder of Useful Sensors. Uh, we have uh, Terry here as well who's uh, one of the key team members uh, here. He'll be uh, talking a little bit at the end um, and we've shared some time for um, QA. But what I want to talk to about today is um, running large language models on the edge. Um, and the first question, you know, Dan has touched on some of this as well, but uh, why would you want to do that? Uh, you've got chat GPT in the cloud. Uh, why do you need um, to run this stuff on the edge? One of the really interesting things about watching what's happening with LLMs is that nobody's quite sure exactly what we're going to be doing with them, <laughs> but they do bring some really, really interesting capabilities, especially around natural language and question answering and a whole new way of interactivity um, that we haven't been able to get with computers uh, in any other way before. And running them on the edge actually makes a lot of sense uh, because uh, it's cheaper. Um, you can actually get much faster results and it reduces that dependency you have um, at the moment on a lot of things of having to connect you know, your fridge to Wi-Fi, all of these smart device devices to Wi-Fi that can be uh, a big challenge uh, for a lot of applications. Um, and honestly, uh, they're also a lot of fun uh, to uh, play around with. So what I'm going to be showing you is uh, a 3 billion parameter model um, called Orca um, running on a Raspberry Pi um, just a Raspberry Pi 5, sort of stock, 8 gigabyte, um, because it does require uh, a fair amount of RAM, um, but no additional hardware, nothing special. Um, and this example is actually coming from the uh, class uh, that I'm teaching at Stanford around uh, Edge ML. So you can actually find full instructions for this um, up on GitHub. Um, if you are going to try and do this, I recommend looking at lab zero first, which describes how to set up your Pi and your laptop with um, all of the uh, software and configuration and everything else that you need. Um, and then uh, you can just go here and actually grab uh, the couple of scripts you need to run a large language model. Um, there's a couple of things you need to do on your Pi uh, before you actually are able to run these scripts. Um, one funky one that took me a while to figure out was uh, actually making sure that uh, the operating system lets you access uh, all of the memory that's on the Pi. Uh, one of the things that has actually been a big blocker for running large language models on phones, uh, especially, is that most phone OSs, including Android and iOS, they expect you to use maybe, you know, 100 megabytes, maybe 200 megabytes, uh, you know, at most a few hundred megabytes of RAM. Um, they get very unhappy if you start trying to use gigabytes of RAM. And that's really something that these large language models need. And I think that's a reason that we haven't seen more large language models running locally on the phone, uh, unless they're from people who make, uh, I, uh, you know, Apple who make iOS or, you know, other phone vendors who are actually able to bend the normal rules for applications a bit. So, uh, 
you run this magic formula to let your applications actually access all of the memory in your Pi. Um, you use pip to install the um, package uh, that you need, the Llama CPP uh, Python package, which is actually based on GGML, um, which is a fantastic uh, framework for running a lot of these models. Um, and then you just run the uh, download model script. Um, and we've actually, uh, at Useful Sensors, we've made the uh, model file available on our download servers so that you don't have to um, log in to Hugging Face or create a, an account anywhere. Uh, we've just made it, uh, since it's open source, we've made it freely available. Um, so depending on your network speed, that may take, it's like 1.8 gigs. So it may take a few minutes to download. Um, and then running the model is as simple as just uh, dot slash run model dot pi. Um, I will uh, show you the code uh, just to prove to you that it's not too scary. Uh, but I've got a quick uh, screencast of um, what happens when you actually run the model. So let me just make sure there's no audio. So uh, what you can see here is I'm running the run llm.py uh, script. Um, takes a few seconds to start up. You can see how much um, uh, memory it's actually uh, using. Uh, you can see it's using several gigabytes of memory. So you do need that RAM. Um, and then just like with any other chatbot, you get to um, put in your question. Um, and what you'll see here is um, it's actually pretty fast. <laughs> like this is a, you know, no special hardware. This is just using a standard Raspberry Pi 5. Um, and it's pretty close to conversational speed. Um, so hopefully this gets across the idea that you don't actually need a whole bunch of expensive uh, GPUs in the cloud uh, in order to actually... Uh, use this sort of technology. Um, and as you can see, uh, you know, it's not just a question answering um, service. You can actually, uh, you know, quiz it a bit um, and it will actually uh, respond in a very conversational way. Um, and that's something that's pretty, uh, you know, we really haven't been able to do up until the last... Um, a uh, couple of years. Um, and I'm going to show you here, um, there's actually a an initial prompt that you can um, edit in the run uh, model script. Uh, and uh, I'm going to, you know, demonstrate how you can actually change this uh, to be something slightly different to try and change the style of responses that you actually get out of the um, system. So I was trying to draw on my memories of, uh, well, both Paris and uh, being back home in London um, and uh, tried to get the large language model to uh, be more like a rude shopkeeper. Um, but in this case, uh, it didn't make that much difference for the questions I was asking. Um, but you can actually control the behavior um, using this kind of initial prompt. Um, and if you, uh, you know, see what's happening here, um, uh, I'm asking very similar questions, but you can see you can take it in lots of different directions um, and uh, really sort of try and put the LLM on the spot. Um, uh, you can see one of the other problems with LLMs is um, they lie. <laughs> we politely call them hallucinations. Um, but uh, I managed to get this model to start telling me about a trip to Paris um, that it totally did not do. Uh, I wanted to give plenty of time um, for QA on this because I think there's a lot of um, directions that we can go here. Um, but I want to emphasize that 
even though at the moment these models require something that's kind of like phone scale hardware, um, that's not always going to be the case. Both the software and the models um, are actually starting to get a lot smaller um, while staying very capable. And the hardware uh, that's out there, uh, nothing was built for Transformers. Uh, Transformers really caught out a lot of um, hardware manufacturers because they require these very big, um, dynamic, um, essentially dynamic, fully connected layers. And uh, we should start seeing some of the uh, responses to using Transformers coming into some of the sort of microcontroller and the smaller hardware um, over the next uh, couple of years. And I actually think that, uh, you know, we're using them as chatbots a lot at the moment, but using voice interfaces, uh, actually being able to talk to these uh, models and have them talk back is going to be a massive um, uh, advantage for all of these devices we have that don't have screens. Um, they're very good at understanding uh questions that we put in a lot of different ways they're very good at understanding natural language um uh here at useful we're actually um having uh a lot of interest in things like uh you know if you imagine having a uh box on every pillar in like a home improvement store and just being able to walk up to that box and ask it hey you know where are the pvc pipes and actually have it give you directions. Uh, I think that that's a uh, really um, you know, interesting use case. And there are all sorts of other use cases like that that are enabled by being able to run this technology um, on the edge. And um, on that topic, I wanted to give uh, Terry a chance to just introduce himself and say you know, a couple of words about what we're doing. Hi, folks. Terry here. I'm the head of uh, sales and business development at Useful Sensors. Um, our go-to-market strategy is pretty straightforward. We sell software licenses that enable uh, hardware platforms to have um, interactions with, with people uh, in a conversational or a natural manner. We're starting to see a lot of uh, strong uptick from um, people who would like to incorporate presence detection, glance detection, people detection, uh, any kind of recognition that a human is there, um, and also uh, LLMs that can do some interesting things as well. If you'd like to learn more, uh, please reach out to me. I'm Terry at UsefulSensors.com, or go through the web and uh, uh, go through the contact link there. I'd be happy to talk to you about uh, some of our commercial applications that we're working on and maybe potential partnerships as well. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, so I see we have some um, uh, questions here about uh, the, you know, some of the, um, uh, you know, the first question here is from Dimitri. Uh, he'd be curious to see some uh, benchmarks of running Orca on the Raspberry Pi 5 latency tokens per second and things like that. Um, uh, I haven't measured that uh, specifically. Um, uh, but, uh, you can kind of see from the video, uh, that's, uh, just a, uh, live video that I've taken. Um, it's, you know, one of the things that's interesting is it takes up so much, um, uh, computing power on the Pi that, uh, having a fan and having a heat sink in a case actually makes a lot of difference. But yeah, I would love to see um, more of a uh, concerted effort around, hey, let's figure out which um, models run most effectively on the uh, on the Pi. Um, I, somebody here is uh, anonymous attendee is recommending Llama files um, from Mozilla. Uh, Rocket 3B um, runs smoothly on the Pi and requires basically uh, no setup. Um, that's great. Uh, honestly, I'm having trouble <laughs> keeping up with all of the um, different approaches to running LLMs on these edge devices. So I love hearing about uh, new ones like this. Uh, thanks for sharing that. Um, 
There's a question from Bhargav uh, about what kernel modifications uh, we'd have to do to run Llama 2 efficiently and at a decent speed on Pi. Uh, I'm trying to remember what different sizes uh, Llama 2 comes in. I thought that there was like maybe a 3 billion parameter model, um, which uh, actually I think runs... Um, if I remember correctly, that actually runs at a pretty decent speed too. Um, one of the interesting things I found um, is that uh, a lot of these models tend to be um, limited by DRAM bandwidth. Um, so if you figure out how much DRAM, um, you know, the speed that it will take for a model to access DRAM, that actually gives you a pretty good estimate for... Um, what the total uh, speed is going to be. And in terms of kernel modifications, um, I would love to, since these models are very deterministic and they're actually, you, you can actually predict which areas of RAM they're going to access kind of, you know, long ahead of time. I would love some kernel modifications uh, to let us um, use the cache more efficiently. Um, so that we can kind of pre-fill the cache um, more effectively, make sure that pages are, um, you know, paged in and paged out. Um, I think that that's quite a big topic, though. Um, so uh, I only have kind of those preliminary thoughts on that one. Um, so Callan is asking about a home lab uh, for playing around with this. Um, I uh asking whether you need a big machine. Uh, I actually really like using Google Colab, um, which is like a Jupyter notebook environment, but that gives you access to a pretty decent uh, GPU uh, for free. Um, and that's what we're using in the Stanford course to actually train these mod models. Um, uh, somebody's asking if there's a link to the Raspberry Pi LLM code base. Uh, I'll actually uh, quickly throw that into the... Uh, it's in the slides, uh, but I will throw that into the... Um, or I'll ask Olga to throw that into the chat. Let me just uh, throw that in. Um, so yeah, I've just sent that to Olga. One more question, Pete, please. Sorry, Jeff, there's no yeah, more Yeah, yeah, no, I know. We've we've got a lot of uh, lot of questions yep. coming up here. So um yeah, let's uh and what do you think about moving this into ASIC? That's a very big question. Um, but uh I love that idea. Uh I would love to see some more specialized hardware for this. Anyway, thanks so much everyone, and thanks to Olga and Davis and the team for uh, helping uh, set all this up. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Pete. Thank you, Terry. Thanks, Useful Sensors, for being a part of this. Always always a pleasure to have you here. Uh, for everyone with the questions, you know, they will be answered either here in the chat or in the forum that we always have for our talks. So a uh, big thank you again to all of our sponsors that make this possible. Uh, in particular, thank you to the executive strategic partners of TinyML, Qualcomm AI, Advancing AI Research to Make Efficient AI Ubiquitous, also Sentient, making Edge AI a reality. The Platinum Strategic Partners, Embed UR, uh, Sony AI, De uh, Deploy Vision AI at the Edge at Scale. The Gold Strategic Partners, Arm, Edge Impulse, Infineon, Renaissance, ST Micro, and Synaptics. And the Silver Strategic Partners, which we have here, AI Zip, Arduino, Brainship, Efficient, Greenwaves, Gravity, Climax, Imagimob, Inatera, Nota AI, NXP, Procter & Gamble, Schneider Electric, SenseML, Silicon Labs, and TDK. So that concludes our first day. Don't forget we have a lot more action packed agenda for tomorrow as well, starting at the same time. So that concludes our session for today. And thank you for joining everyone. See you tomorrow.